Today I'm going to be teaching you how to become a master in Adobe Premiere Rush, which is an amazing on-the-go editing software that you can master in just 20 minutes. So let's get started. So when you open up Adobe Premiere Rush, this is the screen that you'll see. And then you click that plus button at the bottom and click add media. That will allow you to add in your clips. And I chose clips from files, but your camera roll will show up and you can select the clips. Next, I select the order that I want the clips to come in. So I click one, two, three, four, five, six for each of the clips. And you just have to decide which is your first clip, which is your second clip. And you can change this afterwards as well but it just helps kind of have an idea of what order you want your clips to come in first. So next, once I have all my clips selected and in the right order, that's when I choose a project name. So I just decided to call this mountain trip because this is some mountain footage that I had. And then you click create in the bottom right corner and it creates your composition. So when you're learning a new software, figuring out the layout can be a little bit daunting. So I wanted to go over just the layout of Adobe Premiere Rush for you so that everything was cleared up and you know where to find all the different tools. So in the top left hand corner on the blue plus, you're going to find media, video, graphics, audio, and voiceover. So this is things that you're importing as well as graphics is text and some transitions. So this is pretty much like an everything button. It's all the things that you would want to add into your video. So in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see three little icons. So the first one to the top that you click will show you your audio. The second one below that will give you a track editor instead of this kind of linear one that you're seeing. And the third one below that will be more like a cursor edit. So when you're using a computer, more like that, um, where you can click on certain clips and kind of change properties of them with that. So on the left hand side, this is where you'll find your transitions, your color grading, your speed of clips, as well as audio editing and transformation tools. So this is the exciting part. We actually get to start editing now. So the first thing I would recommend doing when you start editing is kind of go through your clips and see what clips you want to shorten and where you want to shorten them. When you decide you want to split a clip, you hit the scissor icon in the bottom right corner. Because the second clip had audio that I wanted to get rid of, I went into the track editor and I also turned on the pointer and then I clicked separate audio. Then you can split your clips again. I decided to split another clip because I thought it was too long. So using the scissor icon is a really good way to shorten clips and kind of fit them to the duration that you want. And then when you want to delete the rest, you just hit that trash can button also in the bottom left hand corner. Now, after looking over my third clip, I decided that I wanted to make it faster. So this is where the right hand toolbar comes into place. So underneath the color bar, there's going to be a speed button. And this is where you can change the speed of your clip. So you can change either the range of your clip, which changes the duration, or you can change the range speed, which is the slider beneath it. So changing the range speed speeds up or slows down your clip. So by pulling the range speed to the right, you're making your clip faster. And by moving the range speed to the left, you're making it slower. And then after that, once I've made a change, I always like to watch it over and make sure that I like it and that I want to keep it that way. So once I've done my initial edits and kind of shortened the clips and sped up the clips that I wanted to, then you can go into the transform tab and you can change the horizontal vertical positions of your video. Um, so if you want to crop it and make it smaller, you could. Uh, you can rotate it and you can also change the opacity. So there's many different options in the transform tools and you can also do some cropping and some feathering and I thought the feathering looked cool so I kept that in my um, final video. But there are many options that you can do in the transform tab and you can just change it to suit your needs for whatever you're using the video for.
So next it's time to do some color correcting. So Adobe Premiere Rush makes it really easy to color correct your footage because they have a bunch of different presets and it pretty much works for all the uses that you're going to have. Um, there's a lot of different types and if you think that one coloring is too much for a video, then you can just decrease the intensity with that slider in the bottom right hand corner. So for this project, I decided to use the film preset. And um, another thing you can do is you can add in your own presets, but that's a whole different thing entirely. So I like to use the ones that are in Adobe Premiere Rush. So to add in your color correction, what you're gonna wanna do is click on each individual clip and click on the coloring you want on each clip. There's no way to do it all at the same time, so you're gonna have to go in each clip individually. But with that being said, you can also choose different color corrections for different clips, depending on your needs. So the next thing is adding transitions. So the transitions are that lightning icon in the right hand corner. So for each individual clip, you're gonna have to choose its own transition. There's a bunch of different ones. You can have a fade in and fade out. You can have some wipes where it wipes the clip to the side. Um, there's also some slides and they have it going in all these different directions so it can match the movement of your clip. And all you have to do is click on your clip and click on a transition and it just adds it for you. Now it's time to add some graphics. So there's a bunch of different types of graphics. There's titles, there's transition graphics, and there's overlays. So first we wanna add some overlays. The first one that I'm adding is a subscribe button animation, as well as this other animation that they have uploaded, which is just says loading content like you saw in the intro. And I'm also going to add a transition graphic. And to add these, you just click that blue add button at the bottom right hand corner of that um, module that pops up. So with that track editor turned on, then you can select the graphic that's there. And by holding down on it, you can move it um, to wherever you want in the timeline. And if you want to increase the size of your timeline, just um, take two fingers and zoom in like you're trying to zoom in on a map. So once I have moved my clips to wherever I want them in the timeline, this is when we can start customizing and doing all that cool stuff. So another cool thing you can do with these graphics is if you click on them and then click the speed button, you can change the clip duration. So if you want to make the animation shorter or longer, you have that option. So next I wanna add in another transition graphic. So I'm gonna choose that star and click add. Now that it's in my timeline, there are some cool things that you can also do with transition graphics. So the cool thing is if you go into that text icon, you can actually change the colors of the transition graphics. So on the yellow star, I'm gonna change it to a purple color and then you can change the yellow star as well. Um, and this is the same with all the transition graphics. You can change the color of all of them. And then I'm gonna change the color of the orange star as well. And you can see right on the screen, it is changing the color of that graphic. And then if we play it back, you'll see that the colors have been changed from its original. So another cool thing is with um, any of the graphics that they have preloaded in there, you can change the font. If there's text with subscribe, you can change the font to um, like even a Harry Potter font if you wanted. Uh, it's up to you. And another cool thing is also on this graphic, you can change the color as well. So one other feature that you might not know about is if you click that button, that's in the toolbar with the play and skip, uh, then you can actually change the aspect ratio of your video. So you can make it a square, you can make it vertical. So if you're making this video for your Instagram or for YouTube, you can make the format especially for that and it will look great. Next, when you're working with graphics, if you don't want them to appear in the area that they come up in, you can go to the transform tab and you can change the horizontal and vertical position of your graphic. So I wanted it in the bottom right hand corner and uh, I did that by adjusting the horizontal and vertical position. And if you wanted to rotate it, have it at an angle, you can use the rotation slider. Next, I'm gonna add one more thing with that blue plus button, which is one more graphic. 
So we haven't added in a title graphic yet, so I wanted to show you how to add in one of those. So there's a bunch of different choices, so I'm going to add the stylish crisscross graphic and click add at the bottom corner. So then to edit the text on the graphic, then you just double click on the text that you see in, that you see in the video player and then that'll let you edit the text to whatever you want it to say and then you just click that check mark in the bottom corner. And same with this, you can change the color as well. So now it's time to add some music. We click that blue plus button up in the left hand corner and click music. So with Adobe Premiere Rush, you get some soundtracks that are included. So if you're using this software for a YouTube video, you probably want to check and make sure that these clips are royalty free because you might end up getting copyrighted for the video if you choose to use them. But if it's just for a personal project, then this is a great resource to add to your video. And once you've found a track that you like, you click on it and you click add just like with all the other graphics. So to reposition your music, you click on that music file and drag it to the beginning of your clip or wherever you want that music to start. In the audio settings, you can change the clip volume, you can mute the audio if you want, um, as well as in the advanced settings, there is audio volume, audio duck, and uh, depending on what you have the audio type set as, uh, there's also other features that you can do with the audio, but some of them are premium and they're not part of the free package. So if you're using the free pack, some of those might not be available to you. It's now time to export your video. So now that we have a video edited, we want to click the share button. So the share button is at the top left hand corner next to the home and edit. And the share button, its only purpose is to help you export your video. So the highest quality setting that you can export your video at is 1080p, unless you have a premium membership to it. And in that case, you can export it as 4K. But I have been really impressed with their 1080p quality, so I don't think it's necessary to get 4K, but if you want to, you can. So then you just click export at 1080p. You can change the preset that it's on. I just keep it on 1080p match frame rate. And yeah, then you click export at 1080p and it does all the work for you. And then it's ready to share. You can share to Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Behance, which I believe is another Adobe product, but it also just saves to your camera roll as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, there'll be more Final Cut Pro uploads next week, but for now, um, I just wanted to show you this cool editing software that I use when I'm editing on the go. So, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day!